Hello there. Oh, hello. So this week's video is gonna be a little bit different. As opposed to working on the bus this week, we went to Kansas to take my dad back. And it was a fun journey, and we turned it into a little bit of a mini vacation. Child had to persuade me to be okay with taking a vacation because my EP was coming out on Sunday. I was like, I gotta make sure everything's right, mom. And he's like, no, you gotta take a break. You stop for a second. Yeah. That's really good for getting to breathe. Uh, which is which is wise because when the EP did come, I realized that I had made a bunch of mistakes. I was just blind to guys seeing the data over and over and over again. So yeah, <laughs> didn't hurt taking some days off. Nothing exploded. Exactly. Nothing fell down. And we discovered a little hidden gem. So yeah, we headed north with most of everything. And just forget my dad's favorite possession in the world, which we didn't realize until we were in Kansas. In the house. Yeah, Charles had spent so much time getting that radio to come back to life and seeing a hundred year old radio glow and make sounds like, ha, ah, his dad just looks so dejected and I know. realized that I we know. didn't have it. But on the positive, we're heading back up in a month. So that'll be fun. Hopefully the ride up is as fun as it was this time. I don't know how most people are, are like the rain, but storms make me very nervous, especially when I'm driving. Charles and Gary were like, storm, look at that lightning, whoa, yay. I'm like, huh. Ah. Yeah, we both have a lot of my grandfather in us, which is the, you hear the tornado sirens and you go out to the porch and see what you can see. I grew up on an island where there were no natural disasters like that. Like tornadoes are normal for him. For me, I'm just like, the sky's falling down, it's green. <laughs> but you know, all in all, we made it through the storm with out any uh, great <laughs> disasters. Was Lightning was impressive. Lightning plus windmills was very impressive. Oh my gosh. I, I, I know people in the area call it an eyesore, but I think the wind turbines are super cool. Also, like Charles and I used to be long distance and we would drive between Kansas and Texas a bunch. So we're pretty familiar with that drive. And for me, seeing the turbines meant that I was like, I forget, was it 60%? Okay. There's, well, there's two wind farms and they're each about 20, like 30 percent of the way there. So it's like yeah. a third and then a third and then you're there. Yeah, like the wind, seeing the wind turbines is like, yes, I've made it to this checkpoint. I'm closer to Charles now. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the last rest stop, which is okay. for us, the bizarre cattle pens in the Flint Hills in Kansas on 35 and north. It's a, if, if you're ever on 35 and you need to break the monotony, that is I-35. And anybody who's driven I-35 knows what I'm talking about. The thing I always say about the drive to Kansas is it's the only 600 miles you can drive and only have to take two turns. Uh, we get onto the highway here and we don't turn until we hit Topeka. Uh, but if you're ever taking that that drive, the bizarre cattle pens in the Flint Hills. So pretty. Uh, it is wondrous. And it maybe that's just me being a sucker for a good horizon and good sunset, but Ooh, buddy. It's it's in the middle of a bunch of cattle fields and used to be a big cattle trading spot where they would load cows onto train cars and move them to where they need to go. Oh. Uh, that's not done in that area anymore, so that's why they're kind of good fun. Mm -hmm. But you'll still, every once in a while, see a cattle trailer getting loaded up. But... That's cool. Oh, so it's a snake. Oh, yes. That danger noodle. It was really cool. Okay. Also in the name, Danger Noodle, is the word danger, and Charles like, I'm gonna get a closer look at it. I'm like, okay, don't go too close. I'm not gonna go too close. And then snake here, and Charles just like, oh, I'm like, Charles. I wasn't Charles. that close. That was a pretty snake. It really, in really good health for being as big as it was. No wounds, no mites, all, all the good stuff. Mm. And then we made it to the house like in really good time. I'm sorry, Gary, that drive probably was super rough, but we made it in really good time. And 90% what he was telling your mom and your brother about Texas was food. Yeah, yeah, I think that was definitely his primary uh, takeaway was the Dr. Pepper shake from Whataburger, uh, what, Silvercitas, and... And the cake. And the cake. Well, not cake, pie. Pie, yeah. So, uh, Gary happened to spend his birthday with us and he told Charles, I'm not really into sweets, and we're like, all right. And he's like, you know what, actually a key lime pie, if it's good, would be great. And we're just like, uh... Okay, we'll get you a key lime pie. And I took Charles to the bakeries that I knew of in the area that were solid because bad key lime pie is terrible. And they didn't have any. 
And so I messaged my friend Alex Clifton. I did her logo for her bakery business. And I was like, do you do emergency cakes? And she did, she did. And she even delivered it to the house wearing a mask. And she, she's awesome. And it was so good. It was unbelievable. It really was. I, I, I mean, to be fair, I don't think we should even look at bakeries in the future when we're looking for cakes and stuff. We should well, just call Alex. Like, just call Alex. It was as good as you can make a key lime pie. My mom used to live in Florida for a bit and she tried key lime pie because that's supposed to be a thing you do. And she said it was horrendous. And so she was a little wary of the choice of birthday confectionery. And she made this comment that that's a thing that artists can do. They can take a thing that isn't something you're into, something that you normally like, and make it an experience that can be shared and enjoyed by people. It's a good perspective. My mom was getting poetic about this yeah. kind of pie. She was very into it. Oh. And your dad uh, talked about how he ate that white stuff on top that he normally just scoops up. Yeah. Even that stuff was good. <laughs> oh, and we made some first Bloody Marys for his birthday. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that we did as best as we could on that one. Solid, solid Bloody Marys. We still have Bloody Mary mix left. We do. I, I definitely went a little overboard making the making the Bloody Mary mix. <laughs> I came out and Charles just has this like tank of Bloody Mary mix. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we're partying. But his dad doesn't really drink, so yeah. I, I, I always forget that dad is he wanted a Bloody Mary, and when he said he wanted a Bloody Mary, he wanted one Bloody Mary. And I guess I'm just not used to being around people who are drink that responsibly. To be fair, the food and the pie and the Bloody Mary were just so full. Yeah. We just Lebowski'd our way into oblivion. Also, in Kansas, it was nice to see your old roommates again. Yeah, yeah, it was super cool. I... They're, it's always hard to know how quite to refer to them. Like, they're, they're my old roommates. They're like some of my best of friends. They're my business partners. They're unrepentant trash pirates. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were super cool. Even though we're, knowing we were coming from Dallas, they let us stay with them. You know, we were doing our best to stay care be careful the whole time, yeah. especially since my dad is high risk. So we didn't want to take any chances while we were down here in Dallas. So that kind of gave us the opportunity that while we were in Lawrence, to take it a little easier, still be cautious, make sure we're wearing masks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I felt comfortable enough staying with friends. And it was cool. It was cool seeing the old house, and it was, it was cool going out to the shop and, you know, going through more tools, because I have an infinite pile of tools that I inherited from my grandfather. Um, some of which are in Kansas, some of which are down here in Dallas. Throwing some axes, it was, it was good. I... Gosh, okay, so John and Pixie are, like, I know both of them, but usually when we get together, well, usually when we get together, Charles kind of squirrels off with one of them to catch up and then the other one to catch up. And so it was, I guess, Sean catch up time. And so I was catching up with Pixie and we, we talked about art and she's a barista and like we have a lot of shared interests and she's just great. But we're talking and talking about life and stuff and then we hear just like, dunk, sound. Like, ah. And we walk outside and these two, two very deep into the party mode guys are just hauling out this giant thingy that their axes at. I'm like, whoa, Charles hasn't eaten dinner yet. I'm gonna go make some food before he like, obliterates himself because they do not need to bear witness to you obliterating yourself again no well sean did bear witness the first time he did he was there oh he was he was oh. yeah. which is why pixie is now charles's best man not sean <laughs> <laughs> it was fun though in classic fashion sean landed the axe the wrong way which yeah it's always a blast and then we brought them a bottle of rum because they didn't want to turn up empty-handed to stay with them and uh, it was just pineapple rum, and in the morning it was mostly gone. Yeah, it was the artist formerly known as rum. <laughs> it was good. It was real good. It was real good. And I think we just hadn't seen friends for a while. Like, between my mom, Charles, and I, we, we'd get up to some revelry here and there, but I don't think we've just been around friends to party for a, a bit, so... Yeah, just just hung out and had a good time. Also, it doesn't matter how introverted I get, as soon as I hit cans, I'm like, all right, mushy duties, let's go. It was good, it was good. And, you know, got to see the family, hang out with my brother for a little time a bit. I, I'm sad that I missed him, because he's, he's still working, trying to juggle that around, but... Decided we're going back up in a month because I have some house repair stuff to do at my, my parents' house, so 
Yeah, should be good. Should be good. Maybe take another little weekend oh, yeah. vacate on, thing. So on the way back, we... Because nine hours is, is a rough drive, and we finally decided this time, because we always talked about it, we actually did stop somewhere, and we use this app called The Dirt. It's a Y instead of an I. And tells you about different campsites based on like I want I want actual showers or I'm just tenting or I'm an RV, and they give you people's ratings and reviews. And the people on there like give really practical reviews, not yeah. like a bug bit me one star. They actually give pretty solid reviews. It's pretty clearly used by a lot of boondockers and like consistent campers that are. Yeah, yeah. The more more pragmatic stuff. It just it gives it's more like camp notes than it is really a review, unless they're real bad. But there are cool like. Stuff. Also, when we got there, I was concerned because the one I picked had like a fair number of reviews and it's like, oh, what if it's crowded? I really don't want to be around more people. And then we got there, there was no one. There was the camp host who didn't seem to come out of the RV at all. And us. It's beautiful. It was great. It really was. It was uh, the Chickasaw National Park. And ooh, that lake. We, we, we decided to go easy and just take the van with an air mattress. The van has an inverter, so we're able to just blow up the air mattress in the van and not mess with it. Which note, if you're doing that, check how thick your mattress is. Because we didn't realize the one that we grabbed was that thick, that, that thick, and it was a little bit of a tight squeeze. But it was super cozy just listening to the night sounds. I had to get used to it because Except for a frog just like <laughs> jumping into the water. It's like, ah! Um, but it was beautiful. A little stuffy. Should have brought a fan. We cooked food mostly in the dark. <laughs> and then we vlogged back and listened to The Rise of Kyoshi, which is becoming definitely one of my favorite books. Oh, it's, it's so good. good. It's so, it's so good. <laughs> I know people are like super sad about stuff happening in the Avatar universe. And if you're salty about like being out of Avatar stuff to watch, go listen or read. The Rise of Kyoshi. It's, yeah, it's, solid. it's a really solid audiobook, I have to say. If you're making any kind of drive or just sitting around, you know, at you know, like the office doing work, those sorts of things, like, highly don't, recommend. Don't listen to that while you're working, especially if, like, it's moisture sensitive, because I would be crying into my work. It was, it was, it was very emotional. Yeah, good book. Uh, and then in the morning, we woke up and Charles was And Charles wakes me up so, so nicely. So gently, but I'm still just like <laughs> it is morning, do not wake me human. Um, but I rolled over and first see the sun on the lake. A bunch of yearlings with the mom. They were so clumsy. It was so cute. And it was just like this unreal thing. I'm like, wow. I can't It was really, really, really nice. And then we almost had a stowaway. There's a cookie in the car. I was trying to find it. Dog man. At least he found it before he dragged the pork in My pillow fell out of the van. Apparently, somehow I didn't notice when we were loading back up after I had frantically dismissed the cricket. That's okay. In the end, I got ended up being a pillow, so that was that was worth it. Charles told me how old his pillows were. I'm like, I think these are really nice and nice. So it's worth a little bit too. Solid pillow. Good. Now we're home. Cats have completely forgiven us for leaving them. No, they're still very clingy, so <laughs> we'll have to give them extra cuddles and make much crunchies. But all in all, it was a really great breath while we're kind of buried in the bus working on this stuff. And I think it helped us get some perspective and kind of game plan a little bit without feeling like right now we should be doing something. 
Yeah. It was just a really great time. It was just a really great time. And now we're on to working on floors and getting some of the actual internal touches done to the bus so it looks more like a home. And also helping with temperature regulation. And helping with temperature regulation because Texas has decided to be 104 degrees almost every day. And we clean our bus all black. <laughs> but as a note, for all those bus lifers out there, when you're building, you have to just think about what you're building for. Because it's a big, it really matters. Because if you're building to be up in the middle of Alaska away from everybody, you're building a much different bus than say us that are saying, okay, we want, we want to stay in relatively temperate climates, you know, move with the seasons, you know, avoid those extremes in either direction. And sure, every once in a while, you'll encounter those because weather is weather and you can't predict everything, but we're not going to intentionally put ourselves into a situation where we're going to be dealing with 34 degrees. So I'm going to get Travel out of heat because he's turning very rosy, but yeah, welcome to our lives. Do subscribe, like, comment, and we do this every Monday. We'll see you next week.